Hello, this is Dr. Morris again. I felt it important to do a video on the simplicity of the human body and how it works so you can have an insight and you can have the knowledge of how to be well and to be healthy. It's so simple. And when you understand the simplicity of health, you'll start to see that the intellectual side, the treatment-based thinking in our society must come to an end. That we must understand that we're facing extreme genetic weaknesses in our children, extreme lymphatic stagnation from these weaknesses, and a lot of cancer, diabetes, neurological problems, and it's easy to understand what causes these. And it's also easy to find the remedy to it. However, it is a job to acquire a remedy in today's children. There's a lot of work ahead of you parents to rebuild the genetic memories and cells. And that's my specialty. I'm a biochemist, naturopath, got many herbal degrees, health and fitness, iridology. I spent the last 40 years in this field. And my clients have been my greatest learning tool that there could ever be. And I've seen well over 100,000 people in my life. My personal friend, Dr. Jensen, well over 300,000. He was in the health field for 75 years. And although not a vitalist, he brought the scope of iridology to a whole nother level. And important for those practitioners out there to learn iridology. What a great discovery by a surgeon in 1853. So I want to take you down a path of how your body works very simplistically. And in understanding this, you will have the tools and the knowledge to fix any problem you have. Great example, I had a, a lady with spinal bifida, born without an L4, L5. This is the vertebrae to the kidneys. In three years on raw food, she now has L4 and L5. This is the power the body has to regenerate itself. And I could give you case after case after case. So let's start off with some simple things about the human body. Your body is comprised of roughly 100 trillion cells. And I say roughly because it depends what school you go to. Science is still very ignorant of the truth. And we have to just, you know, kind of find a balance in that. So the human body, whether you're talking about the nerves, you're talking about the skin, the bones, the muscle, the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys, the ovaries, the prostate, the brain, doesn't matter. All the human body is comprised of are cells and two major fluids. That predominates your body. Cells and fluids. Some of your cells are so small you can hardly see them and some a foot long. But it's ultimately the cell that makes up the structure, the cell that makes up the organs and glands, the, the buck stops at the cell. Now there's two major fluids that dominate the human body, and these two major fluids obviously is responsible for taking care of the health of the cells. Outside of that you have some bacterium, and bacterium are the janitors of life. If you walk out to your septic tank, you'll find bacteria. You wouldn't go out and put antibiotics in your septic tank and kill the bacteria in your septic tank, would you? Because someday you're going to flush your toilet and wish you had them. Because nothing would break matter down. And we live in a universe where there is no voids. It's already built. We need those atoms. We have a lot of new babies coming in. Nobody can come to this planet. No new trees, no new animals, no new humans without atoms. And if we're using all the atoms, then no one can come. So we have to have things that break uh, matter down to give us more atoms. And that's what the microbial kingdom mostly is. So looking at the bacterium community, they're great for toxicity and toxins. The viral community. There's a, a law of nature that you see on Animal Planet Discover channels, and that is simple. The strong survive, the weak are consumed. You must apply this to the cells in your body. And so virals are like antigens. They attach magnetically to weakened cells and hence initiate immune response to that cell. So they're important to life. 
But just because you have a viral load in your body doesn't mean they're actually adhering to cells. A good example of that is the difference between HIV viral load and AIDS where they're, where they're attaching. Same thing with Hep C. So viral loads, um, we've got fungus out there. Fungus is a, a fermentation family. Candida is a popular thought out there. Uh, you particularly see that in people with weak adrenal glands where the adrenal glands control sugar metabolism and we're a society that eats starch. So because of that, uh, we don't metabolize that amount of sugars. Fermentation is uh, happening in everybody and of course the fungal family comes in and deals with that. And we eat a lot of yeast, uh, breads, uh, cheeses, uh, a lot of fungus out there. So it's good to have a control over that group. There's no question about it. Some people have worms and flukes. You can get those out of the body. And then there's some body chemistry. So going back to the fact that the body's predominantly cells in two fluids. One fluid is obvious. You must feed 100 trillion cells. Each cell requires carbon and oxygen, just like your car motor. So carbon is gasoline, carbohydrates. These are simple sugars. And so carbon and oxygen, where's our carburetor like a car, carbon and oxygen comes together in the cell, yanks out hydrogen, and now you have cell energy, ATP. So that's vital for every cell. You have the endocrine glands, which are little chemical manufacturing plants. The liver, a major chemical transmutation factory. So you have a lot of chemistry going on in the body, and you need to be able to feed the cells. So obviously one fluid's going to be the kitchen of the body. So you have a big kitchen in there called the bloodstream, and uh, this is full of blood vessels and livers and, and the whole nine yard. Pancreases, small bowels, this is where you break down your food. You've got to absorb them. And a lot of endocrine glands are important because you need to utilize the chemistry. So there's a lot that goes on in the chemistry and the feeding aspect of cells, but it's simple. It's just the kitchen. But you must also understand that anything that eats eliminates waste. And so that's important to understand that anything eats poops. And that includes a hundred trillion cells. I don't think you can tell me too many people that poop in their kitchen. Although medically, that's about what they think. And massage therapy, unfortunately, bought into that kind of thinking. There's a whole entire system, and just like a house, there's a whole separate system in your house that is the sewer system that is separate from your kitchen. You have some sewer pipes in your kitchen. And in your body, even your blood dumps what it doesn't want into the sewer system. The sewer system in your body is called the great lymphatic system. I have a part of a new book series coming out on my website, robertmorrisnd.com. Uh, it's called the great lymphatic system. And I'm having a, a book series called The Illusion Called Diseases. It's a book series about all of this. But, and the reason I call it an illusion called disease is because that is appropriate. There is no such thing as diseases. This is made up by the intellectual community to keep you in fear and disempower you to simply understand how the body works. And there's no questions. Nothing flies in from Moose Joe, Alaska here. There's a reason for everything. Everything's cause and effect here. And if you understand a few things about how your body's made and the two sides of chemistry, you will understand the bulk of why you or most people suffer and how you simply can turn this around for yourself. So back again, we're back at the blood, that feeds everybody, but what about the sewer system? The great lymph system is easy to understand. Now the lymphatic system includes a mucosa that lines the mouth, the sinuses, the bronchi, the, the lungs, the gut. The whole body's lined with this mucosa or mucous membrane. It produces mucus. I'm sure there isn't one person listening to this that hasn't experienced mucus, either from a cold and flu-like symptom, which is simply a detoxification symptom, or in one way or another. You see it in your urine. If, you're, if your kidneys are filtering lymphatically, you see it in your stools. You see it coming out the nose, up the mouth, out the ears, and vaginally for women. This mucus is the great sewer system of the body. It's a thicker, mucusy, lipid-based fluid generally cholesterol. And this is because of one side of chemistry that it takes care of. And it needs to be a thicker, more protective fluid than the blood. The blood is a thinner fluid. It needs to move faster through the body. Lymph fluids are much thicker. 
If you want to know how your lymph system works, I've said it's this easy. Think about how your lymphatic system works at home, how your, how your home uh, sewer system works, in other words. When you've got to go to the bathroom, you, you go to the toilet. You flush the toilet, and, and your wastes go out into the sewer pipes. For those that you know, there's a septic tank out in your yard, or the city has a big septic tank where your wastes go. And then there's all these little bacteria in there going, ah, food, time to eat. Time to eat. Better them than us, eh? So the bacteria in the septic tank is vital. You wouldn't, like I said, go kill the bacteria in your septic tank and expect it not to back up in your house. So yeah, if you look at your body, it works the same way. You know, cells can't get up and go to the bathroom. You ever think about that? Cells just can't get up and go to the bathroom. So they, they live on a river of fluids. Every cell has fluids flowing around them. And these are called interstitial fluids, simply fluids that flow around the cells. And which fluids are these interstitial fluids? You'll see them when you pop a pimple. And these interstitial fluids is blood and lymph. The blood brings in the goodies and carries on down the road. The lymph picks the waste up from the cellular activity of chemistry, metabolism, and the like, and pulls these wastes into the lymph vessels. Like blood vessels, they're lymph vessels. So in a house, the, the water pipes would be considered the, the, the blood vessels, and the sewer pipes would be considered the sewer system. And of course, from these lymph vessels, it's off to the body septic tanks, and you've got hundreds of them. Lymph nodes, lymph nodes, the under the arm, axillary, you got tons of lymph nodes, the groin, they're all through you, tonsils, adenoids, appendix, all lymph nodes. Medical doctors like to cut them out when they're swollen. So when your septic tank gets full, just remove it and keep using and flushing your toilet and I'll show you what's going to happen to you. And that's exactly what happens to people without tonsils, adenoids, and appendixes. And therefore, you get stiff, tight shoulders. If it's a tonsils or adenoids, you get glaucoma, lymph pressure, brain lesions, brain cancers, palate cancers. Uh, the list is long. You lose your sense of smell and taste. Your sinuses back up. You lose your teeth. You lose your jaw. You get dizzy when it's a cerebellum and have vertigo. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's a minor form of lymphedema. So it's important not to remove lymph nodes. And of course, if you have a cell that's been damaged, which we call a cancer cell, wouldn't you want it in the lymph nodes? Because the lymph nodes are full of what in your body? That's right, bacteria and immune cells. That's their job. This is the sewer system. This is the system that breaks these things down. Where else? You wouldn't dump it in the blood, would you? No. Not, not civilized, of course. So from the lymph nodes. Most people think you reabsorb these wastes back into the venous system. And, and I, I find this so stupid of thinking because you ignore the biggest eliminative organs of the body in relationship to cellular waste. And that is the three kidneys. You must understand that your kidneys have a far better role than just to filter water. I don't know where these guys got that. These are the filtering organs of the great lymphatic system. It is true, most people have lost their filtering of the lymph ability, so they don't pee much. But when you start filtering, your urine will be cloudy like it's snow in the sky, and you will see a lot of sediment like dandruff, which is nothing but cellular sewage, coming in your urine. Very important. The three kidneys. Well, the right kidney, of course, drains the right brain, the right arm, the right breast or chest, the right hip the right ovary, the right testicle, the right leg, and the left, the left. Well, where, where's the third kidney? 